what is evolution? Because that's usually where most people get lost. Evolution is defined as the cumulative change in populations over time. Please keep in mind that this is not the same thing as the origin of life. We're not talking about the first cell here. We're not talking about the spark of life. That's a concept completely different known as abiogenesis. Evolution is just talking about change in what life is already there, okay? Evolution is a very old concept, long before Charles Darwin. It was actually first proposed back in 600 BCE, which was 300 years before the Old Testament, the first four books of the Old Testament were compiled. That's a very long time. And this, it was well accepted in the scientific community for hundreds of years before Charles Darwin ever came around. So why was he important? What made him so special? Well, he wrote a book. He did a lot of traveling. He got a lot of observations. He compiled his observations and his conclusions in this book on the origin of species by means of natural selection. And that's what made Darwin famous, natural selection. See, everyone knew that evolution was happening. That wasn't a new concept. But what nobody understood was how it happened, the driving force behind it. And that's the beauty of, of natural selection. It's the mechanism, the primary driving force behind evolution. And what it essentially means is that the nature selects the next generation by allowing the most fit to reproduce in greater numbers. So those that had unfavorable traits would have lower reproductive success, whereas those with favorable traits, those traits would appear more frequently in future generations. So, there are four conditions required for evolution. The first is that a trait is heritable. If you can't pass it down, then it's not gonna make any impact in the future. The second is that there's variation in that trait. If all the traits are exactly the same, it doesn't matter which trait succeeds over another because they're all the same. The third is that competition exists. If, uh, if everybody has access to the exact same resources and one's not gonna survive over another, then there's no, got, not gonna be any difference in terms of who's going to have be more successful. The last is a differential reproductive success as a function of that trait. So in this illustration we have here, we have Joe and we have Jim. So we're gonna create a metaphorical situation where Joe is a nice guy and Jim is a jerk. And we're gonna say that being a nice guy and being a jerk are genetic because that's an easy metaphor regardless of whether or not it's an accurate representation of reality. So in this case, because Joe's a nice guy, he gets a girl. And so he gets a girl and his children end up being nice people and they end up having children. And so 45 years down the line, they've got a bunch of people who have this nice guyness gene, right? So in Jim's case, he was a jerk. He got no children, he got no wife, he did not have kids. So 45 years later, there's only one Jim to, what, nine Joes? So evolution happened. There's a change in the allele frequencies. We've got a change happening. That's natural selection. A favorable trait appears more often, an unfavorable trait appears less often. And that's essentially it. Really, this is evolution. Heritable variations in a population make some individuals more competitive than others. Thus, these individuals are more likely to reproduce and pass along these genes. Over time, different populations may become so different that they are no longer able to reproduce and interbreed and have a viable offspring. And they become so different that they are no longer the same species even though they came from the same ancestor. This is evolution by means of natural selection. And that's all it means.